I'm interested to see how our candidate answers this question. Once they share their story, I'll give some feedback on what worked well. In my first job, my manager asked me to develop several forms of tracking projects. I immediately said yes, because I wanted to do everything my manager asked me to do. But as I started working on the project, I realized that I didn't fully understand the overall goal. And the project ended up creating templates that didn't meet my manager's expectations. My manager was disappointed in me, and she told me that if I had asked some clarifying questions, I would have gotten to a better work product. I admitted that I had made a mistake to my manager. And since then, I've tightened up a lot and learned that it doesn't make you look stupid if you ask clarifying questions. I learned that it's better to speak up quickly, and that's how I've handled those situations ever since. The way you answered this was great. You went straight to the point and described the situation with just the right level of detail. A big part of what employers are looking for is that you own your mistakes. You reflected on what you did wrong, specifically not asking clarifying questions, and how that negatively impacted your work. And finally, you talked about what you learned and what to do better next time. You sounded really genuine, and I appreciated that. I'm curious to see what this job candidate says. I'll be sure to share my feedback at the end of their answer. My boss assigned a big project to me that entailed working across multiple teams to collect and analyze data that would help her help make an informed decision about a new service we were introducing to our customers. One of these individuals I needed to collect data from had a bit of a difficult personality. He was late to provide the data, and when he did provide it, it was incomplete or inaccurate. Without receiving the right information from him, I knew I wouldn't be able to complete my assignment. After I asked a few times, he agreed to have coffee with me so we could talk about the situation and I could get a better sense of what his challenges were. I asked what I could do to help make the requests easier for him. He shared that he was overwhelmed as he had multiple competing deadlines that were errors and delays with all the data. We brainstormed ways that I could break down my request into more bite-sized chunks so that he could squeeze in the request in between bigger projects. I then customized each of my requests in a way that would work with his schedule. He appreciated how much I was able to tailor my request to meet his needs. And ultimately, he helped me complete my assignments on time. I liked your approach to this question. It was detailed and crisp. You explained a tough situation and the difficulties that you experienced with this person. And from there, you explained the action steps that you took and the positive outcome that occurred as a result. Crisis averted. I could see that you took the time to really understand this individual's issues. And these kinds of people skills are exactly what you need when working with others. Okay, let's see how a candidate might answer this question. I'll be back in a moment with some feedback. Okay, I've got one. Uh, the day before a major management review, I was told we only had 10 minutes to present our project instead of the promised 15. Most of our team members agreed to shorten their remarks, but one person refused to make changes. I suggested that we sit down over coffee and talk about it. I started as the listener, letting him explain how hard he'd worked. And I realized the issue wasn't about the length of his speech, but more about him being recognized for doing a really thorough job and getting his presentation together. I mean, he was really proud of his work. So we talked about another way of recognizing his efforts. We acknowledged him in our team newsletter. When we wrapped up that part of the conversation, he actually volunteered to shorten his part of the speech. By treating his contributions with respect, I guided him to a better outcome. All right, this is a great example of low-key persuasion in action. You do an awesome job at the beginning of surfacing the real underlying issue. It's all about respect. You create an alternate path that supports this goal 
without wrecking the entire project. And you sum up well at the end, showing how you can be persuasive, but without dominating the conversation. Your tone is friendly and generous, and you smile a lot, which really makes the story come to life. It shows me how your sincere and caring style really helps win people over. Let's see how a candidate might answer this question. I'll be back shortly with some feedback. In my line of work, most top performers have MBAs. I couldn't afford to step out of the workforce for two years to earn one. But I promised myself to do everything possible to earn an MBA within three years while working full time. So I found a top rated online program and started setting my alarm clock for 5.30 AM. I set goals of two hours of study time in the morning and evening and made detailed to-do lists to manage both my study schedule and my other work responsibilities. It was incredibly hard, but I persisted and managed every minute of my day and achieved my goal. Nice work. Your goal is clear, ambitious, and totally relevant to your career. The phrase you use, do everything possible, conveys the depth of your motivation. And I really appreciated the clear and specific actions you took to get to your goal, like starting your day very early. Most importantly, you accomplished your goal. You also conveyed your thoughts with a friendly tone, looking directly at me and making eye contact and having a warm smile throughout. Let's see how a candidate might answer this question. I'll be back momentarily with some detailed feedback. As a young professional, I was given a small event to manage for my company's senior executives. We originally expected about 50 attendees, but then the CEO decided to participate too. Suddenly, the event became much bigger with 400 people attending. There were endless logistics to manage, buses, food, carefully scripted content, speeches, and the program itself. I stepped up and designed carefully crafted messaging documents for each stakeholder. We had weekly check-ins with each group. I ran volunteer trainings to be sure that all the logistics went smoothly. I learned the importance of careful planning and constant practice, two habits that paid off on many projects since then. The event is now considered the most successful of our division. My boss praised my work as going far beyond what she expected when the project was first assigned. Great job. I really like that response for a number of reasons. First, your body language and all the tools that you used to convey and tell the story were spot on. You had inflections in your voice and you used other methods to help people be attached to the story that you were telling. Remember that your interviewer is sizing you up for lack of a better term. So you want all your verbal and nonverbal cues to project confidence and poise. Second, I really love the way you told a story and painted a picture for me to help me understand all the different aspects of the project, where you were able to make adjustments when things didn't go according to plan, and bring me along for the journey in an authentic way. It's really important to project sincerity and real life examples of why you're a fit for this job, and you did that in telling the story. Lastly, because you told a complete story from beginning to end, you were able to help me understand the outcome and the implications of a job, which is really important as you think about someone that I would want to make an investment in to bring onto my team. So well done. Let's see how a candidate might handle this question. I'll be back momentarily with some feedback. Two months ago, I was working on my company's big quarterly project update. Two team members left unexpectedly and we were shorthanded with three weeks to go. I convened an urgent strategy session where we identified all the sub projects they were involved in and mapped out our action plan. We shared out the most important task within the team and got them all done in time. We canceled two optional features that could wait a quarter and we reached out to a former intern who was able to deliver 15 hours of remote work in the last weekend sprint before the deadline. We were able to complete the project without a delay and delivered on all of the essential deliverables by being creative, strategic, and very focused. That's a well thought out answer. 
You engaged with passion as you explained the problem quickly and clearly. You position yourself as a friendly leader who got to work addressing the challenge for the entire team instead of just yourself. You take us through a classic triage strategy where you focus on the most important elements and deprioritize the rest. And finally, you were super creative and resourceful because you found an unexpected ally with your former intern. You survived the interview. Congratulations. It's time to bust out a thank you note. It's not only critical that you send one, it could be the deciding factor if this is a close race. So how do you nail the thank you? Here are four quick tips. Number one, send it with speed. Get them out the moment you get back to your desk. Don't wait three days. Make this your number one action item after that conversation. Speed will demonstrate that this is important to you and you've got good follow-up skills. Number two, be genuine and specific. I cannot tell you how many formulaic thank you notes I've seen that look like they were just ripped out of some stale old textbook. Hiring managers see lots of these and they're not memorable. You've got this perfect opportunity to stand out. Start by showing some genuine enthusiasm for the role and be specific about why you're excited about it. Expound on something that you guys discussed or follow up with an example that illustrates your strength in something you covered. And if you discovered a shared interest, don't be afraid to weave that in. For instance, maybe you end with, great to meet a fellow Spartan. I'll look for you at the next hockey game. Next, be gracious without groveling. Certainly it's appropriate to express gratitude for their time and their interest in the specifics of your background. Maybe you go with something like, I really appreciated how you recognized the value of my nursing experience. I think this will be really useful in this role. Just be mindful of that line between gratitude and kissing up. They didn't invite you in as a favor, but because they thought you might be a good fit. Keep that in mind. And finally, express interest in the next step. Tell them that you're excited about the role and that you look forward to any next steps they have in mind for you as they complete this stage of the process. And then hit send. Yes, send. Handwritten notes can be nice, but email is faster. Quality and speed, these are your winning combinations.